Hi there, I'm Myra, and today I want to show you how to do a natural dye using avocado pits. And this is one of my favorite natural dyes for two reasons. The first is obvious. Look at these beautiful shades of pink that you can get from an avocado pit. Isn't that surprising? And the second part is because when you're using this, uh, doing this natural dye, you are using all of the avocado. So you're eating the fleshy part to make great guacamole, and then you're saving your seeds to dye some fiber. It's like a win-win situation. This is a simple dye process. I do two things a little bit different, uh, and I do these things because I think that they give me the best shade of pink. And the first is that I make it an alkaline dye bath, and the second is that I do this dye over several days and not just in one day. We have our dye pot. Now I should stop and say that even though we're using something that you would find in your kitchen, you do not want to use your kitchen supplies. You want to stick with your dye supplies. So I have my dye pot and my dye measuring spoon, which I will use for my washing soda. And I use the washing soda to change the dye bath. I'll go over that in a minute. And then I have my dye spoon and of course my pH strips, which I use to test the dye bath. Now, like always, I'm using an animal fiber because animal fibers have an easier time picking up the dye than plant fibers. Now for the avocados, you can use them fresh like I'm going to do today, or you can freeze them. So you just would normally process your avocado, wash off your seed, and then you toss it in the freezer. And when I say toss, I mean, I literally just toss my seeds in the freezer and we have a layer of avocado seeds on my freezer floor and it drives my husband nuts and I think that's hilarious. Um, but today we're gonna use fresh avocados. And the reason we're using fresh is because I need to make a big batch of guacamole for our big D&D weekend. And I don't know if there are any other D&D players out there, but when our dungeon master says roll initiative, we just start snacking. Okay, let's start cutting. I generally just cut them up into quarters. If you're using frozen ones, let them defrost for a little bit, otherwise they're frozen solid and it's just not a good idea. When it comes to a ratio of how many pits per skein, uh, my rule of thumb is the more the better but you can get away with three to one. That will work fine. Okay, perfect. Now we just need to add them to our water. Now at this stage, you are going to let this simmer for maybe an hour or two. And if you have more time, then let it simmer for longer. Just don't let it boil. And then after you simmer it for a little bit on the first day, you're going to turn it off and you're going to leave it. And then the second day, you're just going to do the same thing again. Turn it on, let it simmer for an hour or so. Turn off the heat, leave it be. And then the same thing on the third day, reheat, fourth day, reheat. And then you'll get to a certain point where you'll see that the dye bath has changed and it's kind of a little bit thicker and it's this really dark color. And thankfully, I started one last week so I can show you what it will look like when you are ready. Now you can see here, it's this real nice dark color and even the pits are a beautiful dark color. This is how I judge that it's ready to go. At this stage, I am going to change it with my washing soda because remember, I want an alkaline dye bath. Now I normally shoot for like a pH nine, but again, um, you might want something a little bit different. You have to experiment. OK, 
Okay. I'm going to stir it thoroughly. And now I'm going to use my pH strips and I'm going to check the alkalinity to see if I need to add more washing soda. Oh, no, that's good. Perfect, pH nine. Now I'm gonna let this do its thing for a little bit to make sure that that washing soda completely dissolves into the dye bath. And while that is happening, I'm going to get my yarn wet in warm water so that I don't shock it when I put it into a warm dye bath. It's been about 15, 20 minutes. I'm sure that it's long enough for that washing soda to completely absolve. So I am going to add in my skeins. Okay, let's see. Ooh, <laughs> this is always so exciting. Look, isn't that pretty? Gets me every time. Okay, skein one. Normally I don't add in two skeins at one time because I don't have that big of a dye pot today, but I'm gonna do it anyway and let's see what happens. Usually you just want enough dye to cover the skein completely so it can move freely in there. And these are moving freely, so I think this will be okay. Oh, it looks so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to, oh, look at that already. So I'm gonna let this do its thing for about maybe an hour at a very low heat. I'm gonna turn this down even more um, because once you add washing soda, you do not want it to get to a high heat with your fiber in there. And then we'll check on it in an hour and see how it looks. Okay, so this dye has been going for about an hour, a little over an hour. Very low heat, the yarn has basically been like marinating in it. And it's turned a nice, beautiful, dark pink. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't it amazing that an avocado pit can make this color? So if you are doing this dye, and you don't get a color like this, that's okay. It likely means that your dye bath just needed another day or two for all that color in the pits to seep into the water. So what you can do is just leave your skeins in the dye bath overnight, and then the next day, pull out the skein, reheat the dye bath, put the skein back in, cover it, leave it overnight, and keep doing that until it gets to a dark color that you really like. These ones are good, so I'm just removing them from the dye bath. I'm going to let them cool and then I will rinse. So if you try this dye, will you let me know how it goes? And if you have another method of doing it, I wanna know that too because I love to learn new things. So until we dye again, 